Stentless bioprosthetic walls do not have supporting framework so that they can have a higher effective wall orifice area. This is an advantage in avoiding patient prosthesis mismatch, especially in aortic stenosis. In isolated aortic stenosis, the aortic annulus is not dilated and often only a small sized prosthesis can be implanted unless one goes for aortic root widening procedures with added morbidity and potential mortality. The relatively smaller size of stented aortic prosthesis leads to patient prosthesis mismatch and poor regression of transvalva gradient and left ventricular hypertrophy. This can be avoided to some extent by using stentless bioprosthesis which has a higher effective wall orifice area compared to stented bioprosthesis due to the absence of a supporting framework. But implanting stentless bioprosthetic wall is technically more demanding for the surgeon and can prolong operating times causing higher morbidity. Stentless bioprosthetic walls aim at maximizing the effective orifice area to tissue annulus ratio for better hemodynamic and clinical outcomes. Stentless bioprosthetic wall produces better exercise hemodynamics and greater regression of left ventricular hypertrophy when used in the aortic position. They have a better orifice size for a given annular size. Hence, they are suited for those patients with aortic stenosis and a small aortic annulus. The other option in case of small annular size in aortic prosthesis is aortic root widening procedure. 6 year results of Toronto SPV stentless porcine wall bioprosthesis was reported in 1999. There were 635 patients in the age range of 33 to 93 years. At 6 years, the actuarial survival was 82.6%. The mean systolic gradient was only 5 mm of mercury and 81% were free of cardiac symptoms. 85% did not have aortic regurgitation and there were no primary tissue failures. An early meta-analysis compared the regression of left ventricular mass between standard and standless aortic prosthetic walls. After evaluating 10 studies which involved a total of over 900 patients, they concluded that stentless aortic processes give better regression of left ventricular mass, lower trans aortic gradients, and better effective orifice index. But the aortic cross clamp times and cardiopulmonary bypass times were higher because of the complexity of the replacement process of stentless aortic bioprocesses. Long-term data on freestyle stentless bioprocesses is also available. Between 1993 and 2013, 531 patients underwent implantation of freestyle stentless bioprocesses either with or without aortic root reconstruction. Freedom from reoperation for structural wall degeneration was 94.6% and 76.7% at 10 years and 15 years respectively in those who did not undergo aortic root reconstruction. In those who underwent aortic root reconstruction also, it was 98.9% and 88.1% at 10 and 15 years, indicating a better result for those who underwent aortic root reconstruction as well. But the difference in techniques did not influence in hospital or long-term mortality. Batch DS et al. have also reported on the long-term results 15 years of freestyle stentless bioprocesses. 402 males and 323 women had a total follow-up of 5491.2 patient years. 10 and 15 year survivals were around 46% and 26% respectively. Freedom from wall-related death was 95% and 93% respectively. Increased age was associated with higher mortality but lower risk of reoperation and explant due to structural wall degeneration as expected.